What's up, everybody? Welcome to Tesla Fix. Today we have a very, very special, smaller episode because we have somebody on the field, in the field, and he is going to look at the Tesla bot. Here is Scott Walter, everybody. So let's look at the Tesla bot face to face now. We're going to interview the Tesla bot. <laughs> That's it. So okay. hi, Scott. Thanks for being on. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. So uh, here we are. We're here in Orlando, Florida, at the Florida Mall. And actually, right outside, there's a very long queue. It's getting bigger and bigger, but it's not actually for the Tesla bot. It's for okay. the Apple Titan. <laughs> it's okay, getting pretty yeah. long. However, we are expecting a crowd to show up here probably within the next 30 minutes to have a, a look at the Tesla bot. And of course, last night, a video hit uh, on Twitter. Yes. Oh, sorry, X about X, yeah. Optimist and what it can do. And so what I've decided is, like, you know, I brought a friend along here. And I'm going to ask him for a few comments right now to see what he says. So uh, right Perfect. now, I'm going, to, I'm going to ask Optimus. So, so Optimus, can you help us? We'd like to know what are your reactions to last night's video? <laughs> mm. He's not responding. No, no, no comments. comments. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Uh, yeah, and it's probably about as likely to get a comment from this guy as it is that Elon's ever going to schedule that interview with John Gibbs. So, uh, Yeah. <laughs> We're still waiting, Elon. We're still yeah. waiting. We're still waiting. We're still waiting. Okay? <laughs> That's a fair point amongst the community right here. So, yeah, so we're here in the Tesla showroom. And as you may notice, uh, it, it, it was one over in Germany, but it's not in the showroom yet. It was at some event in Munich for a few days. Uh, but, yeah, that, maybe so, it was in the I, IAA, maybe, or something like this. I yes, could imagine. It was. Uh, okay. Just, just, just before Octoberfest. And then uh, it, it left, left town. So, uh, anyways, the Tesla bot is showing up in malls around the U.S. and Canada. So there's already, this is the third Tesla bot I've seen in Florida. First Jacksonville, half and now here. We know there's some in the Dallas area, the L.A. area, in New York, and Michigan. Mm -hmm. And so if you get good traffic coming through your mall, your store, you get one of these. And I am referring to these as the optics. And it's an optic game because it's really a a, a mannequin more than it is the actual Optimus robot, but it is a very faithful reproduction of Optimus. So you can kind of look in here and get an idea of how the mechanics of this are going to work. So we, we can see where the actuators are. We yeah. can take a look at the different joints. Everything else is sort of in here in Optimus to get an idea of the scale and everything else. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it doesn't have everything. It doesn't have the actual motors. These are, are 3D printed motors without the actual... Um, armatures in there or anything else and you've got um, the battery pack that is missing so there's nothing in the battery pack it's completely empty could and you turn the camera for one second to show to show yes, the audience yes. yeah okay so, here's so the we arm have, we have mm -hmm. so, so that's where the battery pack would be yeah it's yeah empty. it's, it's yeah. a void and we can see the arm and then mm -hmm. these look like they're metallic they are actually 3d printed yeah okay uh, but yeah they, they, they are dimensionally correct they do represent yeah. the actual optimus and there's yeah. some little bits on here that actually are metal. So these joints that we see down here are showing. So you get an idea how it's going to work. So when you come to the mall, you're going to get an idea. Yeah. What does Optimus look like? What's the size? How is it put together? And mm -hmm. then there's the other question is how does it work? And that's what that video last night, which was yeah. really quite impressive. Uh, yeah, it's astonishing what happened there. Uh, yeah, maybe you can come. Yeah. We've all seen the video. So maybe you can give us some yeah. some insights there. Okay, so so the first thing is like when you get up in the morning, you may or may not kind of know where your body position is. You yeah, know, we have this concept called post preception that we have an internalized model of where our body is. So the way to look at post preception is that if I close my eyes, I can still touch my nose with my fingers because yeah. I have this internal model that's very good. And the way to do that is I, in a sense, know the angles that all the joints in my arms are going through. And it's the same thing with Optimus. Is it has, if it knows what the angles are of every single joint, it knows where it is in space. The problem is it may be out of calibration because the encoders, and the term is they talk about encoders, and the encoder is just a fancy word for like a protractor that's measuring the angle of something. So probably you can infer what is the angle that my elbow is going to be right now, or my shoulder joint, or something like that. If I know the lengths of all my arms through some trigonometry and other things, I can say exactly the Cartesian position of this point in space. Yes. Um, so all I have to do is kind of um, be able to correlate some partition position in space with my joint end. So that's what they call the forward kinematic model of the arm. But mm -hmm. you have manufacturing errors when you build anything. It doesn't come out quite right. And usually what happens is the zero reference frame 
of the joint may not be quite right for the encoder. So it's measuring zero from the wrong position. Mm -hmm. We're trying to find where that is. So to do that is that you have a survey that's going on. You look at yep. the landmarks on your hand and you'll notice yep. there'll be some knuckle joints and a few other things. Yeah. And the camera picks it up and says, wait a minute, I recognize this. And based on the internal model, um, and based on my joint angle, I expect it to be here in the XYZ space. Yes. So wait a minute, it's not there in XYZ space. There's an error. How do I correct it? So the one way to look at it is that your code has been flipped every now and then for some reason, or just when you assemble it for the first time. So it may lose that record. So imagine you have a watch. Mm -hmm. And the watch face that's on there keeps sliding around. So even though the, the minute hand and the hour hand are pointing right at midnight, it says it's 3.30 in the afternoon because the watch face has slipped around. It's out of position. So what you want to do is you want to try to figure out what is the error in my watch face that I need to slip it around to get it in the right position. And that's what's going on with that little thing used in some standard math. But the other thing, the measurement system, the camera system also has to be calibrated. So the first thing you have to do is like, what's the distance between your two odds? And when they manufacture optimus, it will be a little bit different. That eventually they go ahead to get it in there, and then they're able to sort of say, ah, with the stereo vision, that point in space, I know exactly where it is in space. And then mm -hmm. they oversample to see there's all kinds of mm -hmm. dots around there. Yeah, and this is, is it in space, and now you tell them. So that's the first step. Now optimus knows where it is. And that's just like the first look. Well, 20 seconds of that video, there's a lot more to it. And then you, you see how Oculus is now that it kind of knows where its internal representation is. Because remember the tweet, they said, video in, control out. The control out is that we expect these are what the encoder counts are going to be to get to that location. But if your encoder counts are all wrong because your, your encoder has slipped, or you turn the power off and it powers up, and now it doesn't know where it is, you're going mm -hmm. to miss those targets. Again, it'll run again. So the calibration was very important. The calibration is important to be very important. So that's what the first step is. That's almost that's very standard in the robotics community for industrial robots and everything. Every robot that's manufactured goes through a measurement step like that. Yeah. Try to find out what the true encoded values are and the other parameters because the arm lengths could be shorter or longer than design. Yeah. So you now want to take the actual model and mass it to the idea. Well, actually, put the idea more into the actual model. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. It's just like those, for example, those DJI gimbals where the, wow. the cameras are adjusted and stabilized. They always have to be yeah. um, sta uh, as, um, go into this test mode to, to test where the motor position is, how, how the torque is, yeah. how heavy everything exactly. is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, every day when you wake up, your body is a little bit different. You know, your muscles are maybe a little weaker or stronger depending yeah. on whether you worked out the day before or, you know, haven't been working out. So that means your internal model has to constantly change and adjust itself as you grow and everything else. And so Optimus has to do that every day. And I'm assuming every day, I'm not sure how, whether the coders physically yeah. slip or whether they end up slipping just because the power gets turned off. So they may be, they're probably like relative actuator of encoders versus absolute, mm -hmm. which means they have to keep count. And if your bookkeeping gets messed up, you start to get out of phase of where you're supposed to be. Yeah. So, you know, there's like, if I count so many pulses going in one direction, that equals so many degrees, and then it goes the other way and back and forth. But if you miss a pulse here or there, you're going to start to slide up here. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that could just be a way of making sure they make up for that. Yeah. So, and uh, we've we've seen a video before that we've also analyzed together, where um, the worker was um, having this AR VR uh, headset on, and and then just. Uh, doing this task that the bot did in the in the follow-up video that we've seen yesterday and um how how do you think um how how actually is it is it um because you've seen how he, he put the blocks into it. And one time yeah. the block uh, fell over and then the bot really took their fingers and turned it around. And at that moment I was like, oh my God, okay, this is very, this is, it, it, it's so human-like. It's a little bit slower, but it makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's very human-like. But it, 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 it's reasonably good speed. It was at 1.5 speed. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. For yeah. an easier to it's at 1.5 speed, but still very fast, nice, very fluid. It's doing mm -hmm. some clever thing. The thing you may not have noticed is that when that block fell over, it knew to grab it in its hands kind of in this orientation. Mm -hmm. You know, rather than all the other blocks, it was kind of picking us to come yep. top down. Now, in this case, it knew to get it because that was the way to bring it over. Imagine if it had kind of picked up from the top, it may not have been able to do it. Yeah. So it was kind of aware of the limits of its motion on what is the ideal way to grab that. 
that was something that was kind of key and interesting to see that yeah. it could do something, figure it out. And yeah. then the other is the cat and mouse game that's playing with the human mm -hmm. and instantly changing a mid course direction. It was going for a target, and the target suddenly moved. And then it went off somewhere else. And in another case, it said, oh, the target moved, but there's a better one over here. I'm going to go ahead and get that. Yeah. So yeah. it was very interesting how it was able to make those decisions very quickly. Because I, I was expecting a pause and to go like, whoa, wait a minute. And then think about it for a second and then decide to go. But it seemed like as it was moving, oh, it's over there. I'm going to go ahead and roll. So that was very impressive. The other thing that you have to find out, which I'm not quite sure of, is whether the human operator is being very careful not to bump into Optimus. Because it looked like Optimus is being very careful not to bump into the human. So when he tried to grab the block away, it was moving around there. It seemed like Optimus decided to stop and not mm -hmm. go all the way down, just release the block and get out of the way. So it felt like, wait a minute, he's trying to hit me. Um, I don't want that to happen because I'm like injured to deal with. Because you get to remember, Asimov's three laws of robotics. The first one is that a robot will not cause any harm to a human. Yeah. I don't know if that's built into it. That's like one of the first questions. Say it's like, how strong is that rule in Optimus right now to make sure when someone's playing this cat and mouse game, it doesn't try mm -hmm. to grab the block play and it, it uh, unintentionally enter the room. So yeah. that is going to be a very interesting emergent property, I suppose. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely interesting. And what do you think? I'm um, now uh, witnessing the Tesla, but in person, I I know you, you've you already looked at it uh, some places. Yeah. But yeah. Um, what is so so uh, interesting with in combination with the video? What what really um, uh, struck you out of your feet? Or was it just expected for you? Um, uh, how did yeah, you well, see the progress? You know, there's, a, there's a lot of things that were sort of expected that they'd start to get to that learning phase and to do that and to see that it's end to end to say The calibration, I knew at some point they were going to have to do something like that, and I was glad to see it. So that's kind of filling in the way exactly you do it. Media measurement system, you kind of map it to the internalized audit so we know the robot has very good folk reception. The, um, the other thing is, you know, just seeing the decision making, how quickly that neural net was able to react was absolutely amazing. But the other is the, the yoga that was doing at this end and balancing seems very, very impressive for a couple of reasons. But I expected it. And the reason why I expected it, if you remember the motion control, the torque motion control in one of the last Tesla videos where the leg came down and did not break his eggs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was only probably it's like they really know how to control this thing. And when you also look at the motion of the robot, picking at the blocks, you know it's not just using its power. It was using its whole body. Yeah, exactly. Move around. So, so that means it's aware of its entire body, whatever it does any sort of motion. And that's what goes in with, with yoga, is that you aren't just moving one point, your whole body has to kind of respond to it, especially to get that back. Mm -hmm. so it's understanding counterbalances, and it's integrated all 28 actuators, the structural actuators, into its motion plan. It's not planning to move my arm with just seven axes to go ahead and deal with Everything yeah. else is integrated in there to be able to do it. The mm -hmm. other thing you may have noticed is the very last pose, which um, it's it's the one right where the Lamaste is and the leg yeah, is the yeah, up. Yeah. It looks very closely at the foot and the planted leg, and you will notice that it's angled a little bit. Yeah. In order to do that, that means the foot has to be able to do this. Now, normally, mm -hmm. when we walk, our feet are staying flat, and it's just we're doing this slow up down kind of thing. Yeah. That's the primary motion there. But you have a little yeah. bit of a side to side. And that side to side mm -hmm. is to deal with on level ground, stepping on a toilet or something like that. Mm -hmm. Your ankle will kind of just go with. But in that case, it was very important to that pause because in order to do that, the ankle had to handle the bed. Yeah. And so, so there was that kind of self that was going on and be able to do that. The other is to notice the range of motion in the leg. So it was really able to bend its knee up pretty hot. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. A little bit more than I was actually expecting. So looking at that, I think Optimus will be able to squat down quite far yeah. and get to pick up something off the ground. And get yeah. yeah. And the other thing that's real helpful to find out is how good is Optimus that falling down? Yeah. He is wearing knee pads in that video. If you look kind of closely, the knee looks yeah. a little bit yeah. Yeah. So he probably falls over. And the question is, does he fall gracefully? Does he know how to fall without injuring himself? That's mm -hmm. one of the first rules of like gymnastics and climbing is that you learn to fall correctly. And then you're allowed to climb. Yeah. So uh, is Optimus willing to fall without getting injured? And when Optimus falls down, how good is Optimus at getting up? Mm. Yeah. So those are some of the things I would like to see that they have all the time.
But those are some of my first impressions. I, I've got way more deep diving yeah. into the reading and to look at some of the, the subtle motion. Yeah. It looks, it looks yeah. cool. And everyone I've shown it to uh, is the same thing. They're, they're all like, wow, edits don't need emoji. And it's yeah. a little bit, I, I had that thing you posted and said to me, I don't know how many times you asked away. I, yeah. I was down at the tape to watch the sweater sounds, and suddenly my phone's exploded. Yeah. It's going on. They're like, oh, oh my God, look at this. This is what it and then, you know, a lot of requests for interviews. So, yeah, yeah, it, it's a big deal. It's, it's a big deal because we didn't expect them to just drop this. Usually, they drop it around in what land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what were your thoughts? Yeah, I, I I found it very interesting um to see that when I saw that I was pretty amazed I was like uh, mind blown and uh, yep. absolutely crazy I think uh, maybe you can uh, show us a little bit more about the bot that is standing there what you find very interesting yep. and then we can um, I think uh, follow up this interview uh, to maybe tomorrow or some when when you have time we can do it in the studio yep. session again and to follow yep. up um, okay so so what what part is What's also interesting, interesting? Mm -hmm. well it's it's the seat of mechanics because when you're looking at this, this on the video or the screen, it's a little bit hard to tell what's going on. So if anyone has the opportunity to go in the showroom and get a much better idea. So if you start looking over here, I think at the list mechanism, Yeah. Uh, I think you've got kind of the list mechanism and how all that works. That's pretty tricky. So it may not be where, how it works and why it works that way, but um, when you see it, it starts to become clear what's going on. So the actual wrist joint is sort of where my fingers are right now. Oh, you can see my finger quite a bit. That's there. like this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, about there. Okay, so yeah. you can probably see my finger right now. Yeah, yeah, so that's, yeah. That's the actual joint that's supposed to move around. Except in order to get it to move, we need to use this actuator back here. Exactly, here, yeah. Which is pushing through there. And this actuator is also designed to make the wrist go that way. So if we look kind of in closely, you might notice that this is a ball and socket to right here. I think we might be able to see that have to get an idea of what that particular mechanism is like and how it works. And then you'll see also there are other details going on here on how yeah. everything is designed. But if you look at it, does it look complex? I mean, there's not that many complex mechanics in this. Now we're not seeing the wiring or the yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. If you just kind of look at it from you know how it actuates and loses everything, it looks very clean, very yeah. easy to design, very easy to assemble. So, you know, your impression is that this will actually be low cost to be able to do that. Yeah. But that's like a normal overall feeling. And, uh, and so we're getting pretty close for our event here. Thank you very much for, for doing this uh, yeah. thing. I think we're yeah. going to follow up as soon as possible when you have time for that. Yeah. So thank you very much, Scott, for this uh, small tour. You're welcome. And see you, yeah. see you on our next interview. Thanks a lot for, for yeah. okay. giving this tour. Thanks. Uh, cheers. Cheers. Okay, thank you.